Hi everyone and uh, welcome to uh, part 2 um, of my build of Broncos 135th scale A9 Cruiser Mark 1. Um, as you can see the uh, primer has been uh, put on. Um, I've used the tried and tested one shot by MIG and that's their brown oxide primer. Um, now what we're going to do is uh, actually have a look at uh, doing a camouflage scheme. Uh, which will be the uh, Quanta scheme which was used by uh, British forces uh, during 1940-41 um, in Africa and the Middle East. Okay, so for those of you who are interested, under the GO297 in November 1940, uh, most of the AFVs and soft skins had, had the three-tone Quanta scheme. Um, Basically you had the base coat, uh, which was a light coat, um, and uh, they used uh, light stone, which is like a light, very yellow, sandy colour. Or they used uh, Portland stone, 64, um, which was more of a, a pale cream, uh, which had a bit of a greenish tinge to it. So that, that, that was the main base coat. Then they'd put a, a slightly darker stripe in, um, which was the basic uh, silver grey 28. And that was a, a sort of medium yellow green type of colour. And then to, to finish it all off, the, the, there'd be a final stripe, um, which would be a dark colour like a, a slate 34. Now that that was a darkish dull grey green. Um, or, or they'd use the uh, standard uh, post war G3 khaki green. And that's a sort of yellowish brown green. Now the quarter scheme um, always um, throws up lot, lots of conversation and uh, lot, lots of discussion. Um, but if you if you follow those um, patterns, um, you, you, you're not going to go far wrong. So what I'm going to be doing uh, first off is doing a, um, a three shaded um, light stone um, for the main base coat. And I'll be using uh, Vallejo's. 71143 and as you can see that's the UK light stone and what I'll do um, for the darker areas is obviously add a little bit of um, dark brown and for the lighter areas I'll add some um, lighter lighter yellows so first of all um, I'll apply a couple of coats of um, hairspray and then we can uh, put the light uh, uh, the dark shade um, of the light stone down and then we can uh, start chipping that. So using a uh, UK light stone uh, mixed in with uh, dark yellow 5050 um, I applied the um, lower hull with the darker colour you probably can't pick it up on the, the camera um, the difference uh, but uh, it's a lot more subtle and then on the top half I've basically done um, the camouflage where roughly uh, the, the, the stripe of the lighter colour is going to be and then what will happen is that I'll mask off uh, the next areas uh, and then apply the other two coats. Um, this has, um, I don't know how well you can see, has been chipped extensively and what will now happen is that I will um, put down um, a, a lighter shade of the UK uh, light stone on top of this uh, just to give it a, a, a two-tone effect.
all the uh, acrylic work is now complete um, just going round as you can see we have the corner scheme bit of a pain but didn't go on too badly uh, the colours used um, for the other two colours was Vallejo the grey, silver grey and the dark colour was the uh, dark slate grey um, I had to use the decals um, annoyingly because uh, I could not find my stencil for British signs anywhere so it looks like I'm going to have to buy another one but um, as I expect you saw the glimpse at the front the little twist now that is an Italian flag um, because this will be a captured A9 so what that will mean a lot of the decals will be covered over um, because obviously the Italians wanted to uh, obscure as much as the uh, British markings as possible um, also the um, fine detailing has been done very basic on this particular model and straightforward uh, with um, all of the metal work done with burnt iron and the one handle there on the um, shovel uh, being done in old wood so we'll now have a look at the uh, turret um, again this is where the significant Italian flag appears that's the name antelope this all corresponds with the uh, research photos and again as you can see there the other Italian flag on that side um, all of this has uh, since been covered in um, two coats of uh, matte varnish um, from Galleria and that will protect it all for when I start the um, oil works um, all of the tyres they've been done in the usual way um, using dark grey for the tyre colour and a, a wash on the back with um, burnt iron um, in readiness for all of their weathering and finally um, the exhaust has been done in the usual way with all of the washes um, really pleased with that it's come out quite well this time um, it's a shame it's going to be covered with the um, exhaust guard but um, it's there anyway so that's good so yeah the next stage now will be to start adding on the filters So with the filters done, I've basically just cracked on and uh, fully weathered the vehicle. So uh, let's run through some processes um, and uh, see if you can uh, use any uh, of my ideas uh, to apply to your own particular builds. First off, we have a look at the running gear. Um, everything went uh, very nicely here. 
Um, there isn't a great deal of mud, uh, just a little bit of build up of dirt, etc., um, using the usual processes of um, pigments, uh, washes, and then pigments and washes, and just building up the layers and the colours. Um, as you can see, I did some um, rust work on the springs there, very pleased with the way that's come out. And also on the wheels, um, as you can see where the tracks rub the rims, uh, they've all been silvered. Um, each of the wheels uh, are, are in different colours. Um, if you look close up, um, you can actually see the dust. Um, maybe it's probably better on that particular one. And with the oil leaks, um, I've made them look a little bit shinier uh, by adding on um, some gloss varnish. The actual tracks themselves, um, they've come out very well. Um, the silvering look was uh, done by just applying uh, dark steel. Um, very simple process. Um, some people like to use a brush. Um, I like to use um, rubber foam pens like this one here. Um, and the application goes on quite nicely indeed. Um, so as far as the lower hull and the springs go, very pleased with that outcome. So again, look, looking at uh, the upper hull and the turret, um, just using uh, pigments and oil washes uh, to create the rain effects coming down. Um, the actual uh, lenses, uh, they were done again with uh, resin. Um, and if I just move forward here, um, you can see the front two lenses have been done as well. Um, you can also see pigments being added um, for the dust. Um, it really is just a matter of putting layer on layer of oils and pigments and just building up um, the grimy dusty look. Um, if we come round here um, you can see uh, the rain marks coming down. As you'll see on the other side, I haven't done the other side because um, it's just nice to, to break up the continuity. There are still some little bits of extras to go on, uh, spare tyres and some fuel cans at the back. Uh, but basically this is now complete the model um, at the back here I've just lost a bracket no idea where that's gone so I'll have to scratch build that one before the finished look and then we'll bring it around to have a look at the uh, exhaust um, in the usual way of building up um, layers of washes of uh, rust colours um, and then using oil work just to add and to enhance and then if we look underneath here um, you can see all of the um, stippling splash work. Moving around again, this side here, uh, particularly like this side, uh, the, the equipment's come out well. Let's just see if we can just get a close up there for you. I will obviously do some stills for you later, but that gives you an idea of all the streaking effects, all the dust work. I thought the vents came out particularly well as well. Overall very happy indeed with the way the build has gone. If this hadn't been such a, a rush job because this had to be finished by uh, January, I'd have probably done uh, more uh, information around the, the uh, techniques um, used. But um, if you look on my other videos, it, it's uh, very much uh, similar processes to, to what I did before. Nothing really new I've done here. Um, other than just vary the techniques uh, to create the different uh, looks and styles. So there's a few little things still to finish off. Um, fire extinguishers have to be done um, and then obviously put on all the accessories like the fuel cans etc. But uh, all in all that's now done. Um, I shall leave you with the final videos and stills and it just leaves me to say thank you once again uh, for continually supporting my work. I'm very humbled by the following that I've now got and thank you ever so much for all of your subscriptions. Um, I look forward to uh, seeing you on my next uh, project, uh, which I'll be uh, kit bashing uh, Tamiya's classic uh, T-74 uh, Russian tanks. So I look forward to seeing you on my next project. Happy modelling.